Jemo Bia Kwa Baba, the tech show on Kofi JC TV. Every Friday evening, 6 o'clock p.m. No, Yani Amano Wobo Amboden, these are the industrious people in the creative art space within Western and Central region. Yani Wobo Amboden, they share their life story. They tell us how it all started, the journey, where they've got into. Sometimes they came into the news and now they are no more. What really brought that? This is a life sharing show. Testimonies are shared. Also, empowerment is given here on this show. This is the tech show. So when you say the tech show, all we say is let's talk. Let's go for our first brief. When you come, I will give a brief info about my guest tonight. I tell you more about my sponsors, then I introduce myself. Then we zoom straight into the conversation. Let's go. Tech. The Tech Show. Friday evening, 6 o'clock p.m., we bring you this conversation right here on YouTube. If you are following us, go on Facebook and Instagram, search Kofi JC TV. On Instagram, make sure you follow us. On Facebook, like our page. Let's get interactive. We are pushing the agenda of Western and Central region to the world. This is why we are here, and this is what we do. This show is proudly brought to you by Western Flavor. They are into pastries. So whatever that you need, if you are doing any event, birthday, naming ceremony, outdoor wing, any bigger events and you need someone to do your pastries for you look no other than western flavor they are also on social media facebook instagram with the name western flavor they are western is spelled w and the e is three instead of e so w3 and then the rest continue western flavor just make sure you contact them use the code coffee jc tv to get a discount on your packages i am your host coffee jc and this is the tech show before I introduce my guest, let me tell you something a little before the camera gets to him. This man I'm going to talk to, I met him in 2017 when I was out of uni doing my service. So how I met him is this way. I was working with Premier FM in TTU. And the person I was co-hosting the drive with was radio man Feggy. So just after the drive, Feggy told me, Charlie Kofi, today I want us to pass through a program happening. I was like, where is it make you go? They went straight to Powergon Bar and Grow right inside town. And you know, I loved the atmosphere. It was the luncheon or the listening of Nate One. That was the beginning of the journey. I never knew him, but I listened to the songs on the tape. I went back to Cape Coast over one weekend. I saw the music video being played on TV3 and everything. I was like, this man is really good. But years back, he has been so quiet in the music space. We brought him here today to have a conversation. Learn more about music. I know he does a lot of things. I have a lot of credentials. He is a sound engineer, or producer. He does a lot. But we'll talk more. My guest today on the tech show is no other person than Nate A. H. N. Let's welcome my guest on the show. Ray. Ray. <laughs> good evening, bro. Yeah, good evening, my brother. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. And yeah, it's nice having you. And me on the show. It's a pleasure coming, man. It's been long coming, but I wanted to have this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Very necessary. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, the family and everyone. Everyone is okay. By God's grace, we are fine. We are okay. So wow. Today we are talking the Nate journey, mm -hmm. but we come to a lot of things. Let's start from the funny aspect of everything. Okay. I've seen you recently with um, Blaze um, enjoying some good meal <laughs> at Cassie, and how, how is the meal like? <laughs> <laughs> you know how Nate is. He, yeah. he, he, he's a fun, fun guy to be around. He would, he would take you along his journey. So, yeah, so it was just one day, and then he gave me a call. Okay, come around, let's go, and then try this stuff up. Wow. So, yeah, it's not really my idea, but like he comes up with all You are enjoying it. it. Yeah, wow. I'm following an <laughs> influencer. <Yeah. laughs> so, I'm wow. enjoying being with an influencer. Wow, wow. that's beautiful. <laughs> And yeah. let's come to it. Um, I've gone through your page. Mm. 
I've seen the kind of people that you relate with more. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say some, but to me, I feel like they are more intellectual. They are more people who are tuned to a particular sector. If they are producers, you see their works good. If they are radio personalities, you see their works. Because I could talk of Alaji Sweets. You are very close to him. Kwame Legend. You are very close. These are the kind of people you move with. What trickles your selection of friends to move with? Um, I don't. I don't really have a criteria for selecting people. It's like if by normal line of duty I get to meet you and we vibe I'll, I'll, I'll hang out with you most of the people I vibe with I think um, I got to meet them through Big Box Studios oh okay uh -huh. so I used to record there a lot I still record there but not that often because I started producing myself okay but I used to record there most of men and I'll I'll meet people okay. I met Kwame there sweet we were there together and then all that so yeah most of my friends are people I know in real life, either school, studio, or so. Wow. Um, I was going through your page. I saw this picture that I wanted to ask. It looks like most of the people at a point you were moving with in terms of music, they ha like in the era I met you, mm. the kind of artists that were doing very well. Let's talk of the township. Let's talk of all these guys. Now it looks like the wave on you is down. What do you think? Is the cause? Mm. Would there be a cause to this? <laughs> uh, I feel like so many things come come into uh, in, when when we talk about these stuff because the music, apart from the art, right? The art is a nice part. You know, the, the artists going to the studio, putting words, lyrics, thoughts, emotions, and everything into a song. The producer adding his bit and all that. Yeah. That's the, I would say that's the easy part. Okay. If you're a good artist, you're a good artist. The names you mentioned of these um, artists who used to be on the wave or are still, I would say they are still so the they, people on the yeah. wave, just that the names aren't mentioned that okay. much. Their talent is still there, the art form is still there. Now, what brought our names out? Okay. Sometimes you have to ask questions. What brings these people out? For me, it was any day going to the studio recording. Okay. But it was through some people and some agendas, I might say, because I quite remember somewhere within from maybe 2013, 14, 15 coming, Western region had an agenda that they have to push artists who are from this region. So you have people like uh, DJ Tablet, DJ uh, Magnus, um, uh, Kwame Legend, Legend. Okay. Yao, Yo, uh, okay. DJ Yao Bibini. Okay, Bibini. A lot of radio personalities would come, and then they would make sure that they will find good songs from the region, and then they will play it. Okay. And with that, they were giving audience to some of us, and people got to know us. Uh -huh. So the media is, I mean, the whole artistry, it's not just the artists. You have... Uh, everyone to support it. Well, wow. Yeah. And I know it should be a full cycle, but I would only think that some of these things started dying down because there may not have been value for money. Okay. Because there should be a value chain. Okay. The DJ playing the song should benefit. The artist recording should benefit. The promoter uh, creating the shows should benefit. So it should go in a whole long cycle and then everybody should benefit but uh, i don't know wow. <laughs> probably there's something that's uh, with, not seeing with what you are saying with relation to the value change mm. you doing the song mm -hmm. yes the song is very good mm. the producer the promoter the dj playing it they also want to have value mm. most of the time the media keeps complaining the artists are ungrateful do you think that has also resulted in the diminishing power of this agenda that they were pushing. Mm. Because as you could mention, Bibini was doing very well at Melody, mm. pushing you guys very hard. Yeah. Uh, Magnus was doing it, Tablet at West Gold and Sky were doing it. Mm -hmm. Now, all these guys that you are mentioning, now Bibini is even out of Takrade now. Yeah. Um, we have Magnus here, Tab Tablet is also not on radio now. Mm. Do you think you people were not giving them that value, that great gratitude, even if you are not giving me money? Let me feel like, oh, wow. You appreciate what I'm doing. Do you think that's the cause? 
I cannot speak for everyone, but to you, for myself, <laughs> I don't think anybody has a problem with me. Okay. Because I'm I'm very free with anyone who is free with me. I I have parties in my house. I invite people. Everything I do, I involve these people. So I don't really uh, know about others. Now I, I know you are interviewing me, yeah. but I would like to have an extra clarification. Yeah, let's go. The fact that you say they usually say that. Yeah. Artists from the Western region yeah. are is it ungrateful? ungrateful. Or, uh, yeah. I don't get to, what does ungrateful mean? I want to, to me, to I think get a picture. Um, if I stand to be quiet, it's a skinny mm. went on Connect FM and made mention that there were there are a lot of artists who have passed through him. And I'll give an example because of that's what he said. He said someone like Kwekubaini. He picked him from the street because Kwekubaini was then selling. He realized that the guy was very good. He brought him to the studio helped him, redefined him. The guy went to mentor, and not even a phone call, boss, Charlie, not even that. We had this man, G.H. Bishop. All these people I mentioned, you know them because they are in the game. G.H. Bishop also made an, a clarification or mm. revealed something that we have an artist called Afrezi Perry. Years back, Afrezi Perry, he met Afrezi Perry around um, this, this big, um, oh, them sports if more I think around the beach area, there's one big hotel there. Mm. Um no, not Atlantic. Atlantic. No, um they also have a spot just around the market circle here, one of the biggest nightclubs here. Um, okay. Um, um, is it short up? Vienna, 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 Vienna they are they are beach side. Okay. We met um Afrizi Perry trying to shoot a music video with just this small uh, music box. And he called Afrizi Perry, took Afrizi Perry to the Vienna city, like, I mean, the hotel. Yeah. Spoke to the manager, arranged a nice place for a music video. A time came that he was organizing an event, called Afrizi Perry to appear because he has then called um, ISM and all this guy. Afrizi Perry told him point blank to call his manager. Mm. So he got angry because when I met you there, doing the music video. You had no manager. I helped you do the music. Now you are directing me to go and talk to your manager before you appear on my show. Then moving forward, Kobna Kobna came to Takradi to do a show. Then Afrizi Perry wanted to have a song with Kobna Kobna. Bishop was then managing Kobna Kobna in oh. terms of Takradi's aspects. Mm. Then they went to Accra and Kobna Kobna asked, that guy Afrizi Perry, I think he's good. What do you think about the song? Then Bishop said, no. The song wouldn't go away. Don't waste your time doing it. So Bishop was not looking at the artistry part of the guy. He was looking at the, the character. He feels like he wasn't appreciated because I did this way. Now you are telling me to go and meet your manager. So I won't do this. So he has he blocked the chance of Afrizi Pei having a song with Kobna Kobna. A lot of people have been doing this, but Bishop came out to say his own. Do you think this thing... I don't know the question to ask from you, but this is what I'm What do I make of it? Okay, yes. so yeah. I feel like uh, you're yeah, adding personal sentiments into some of these stuff. Um, the whole creative art uh, business is a business, a show, biz, show sure. business, right? So um, in every business, you have to look at um, what is feasible, what can be done, the return on it, put into it to get back what you've invested and yeah. all that. So uh, sometimes the emotions should be laid back okay. when we look at it. Okay. I know Afez Perry, right? If I put Afez Perry on this song, without forget the fact that he asked me to meet his manager. Yeah. What can I make out of it? You get it? Yeah. Fine. There's also this thing about loyalty. Okay. So over here they have this thing about like it's not over here. It's almost, almost like you right should here. be loyal to some people. You get it? Well, when you called me. I didn't say anything. Yeah, I just, just agreed. Yeah, yeah. I just came, and um, I don't know. Always these stories they pop up, and I don't know why it happens. But I don't think anyone has called me for a show that I haven't been there. I don't think anyone has asked me that. Oh, Nate, I want to feature on your song. That I know the person that I'm going to put him through some difficulty. Oh, the, but. but Really, it's, it's, some of these stories are baffling to me. I'm, I'm confused <laughs> sometimes. Wow. But uh, we should try our best to be each other's keeper. Wow. And we should be matured with the way we go about things. Because uh, 
everybody has their own frustrations they are going through. Well, you have to empathize with people, try and get to understand people. Not everyone understands this business. Mm -hmm. Someone feels like, I'm recording you, Nala. I must get like two million Ghana cities on me. I must be called for shows and all that. Somebody is not doing it. Mm -hmm. You get it. So, if, even if it was you, look at these guys, since 2012, yeah. I, I actively started this thing like 2012, 2013. Wow, it's almost and 10 years. if you have nothing else to do, they be at me, artists, me, artists. You, you be depressed or frustrated because you always go for shows. No one is going to pay you. The fact that they know you, they don't give you any money, not even transportation, not even. So if you have nothing doing for yourself, sometimes you'll be pushed to give some of these talk to my manager things because it would be very hard for me to tell you that. Okay, mama, five thousand. I'm in bread. I'm interview. Okay, then the manager will be the best person to do that talking for me. You get it, but mostly we should. Yeah, I have some weed. I know if you had to go into this, you go deep. You talk a lot about it. But let me ask you this question: You have been, you are an artist. No, you've been an artist for almost a decade now. 2012 to 2022 is ten years. A decade, strong decade. It's not easy. How easy is it for an artist to be depressed? Mm, just like everyday normal people. Uh, an artist is not superficial. Um, South Korea is South Korea, very huge a name, but he's a human being. Yeah. I can create a tweet, a tweet right now and then be like, yeah, South Korea, blah, 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 at him. And then it will get to his phone. He'll open, he'll read. Or in Nepal, it can get to him, yeah. especially if you talk in a, quite some manner that is yeah. uh, demeaning, sure. you, you, he, he, it can get to him. And imagine you wake up one day and then things are not as you want it. It's just like any any wow. normal normal person, you you can lose it. It's not everyone who has that strength and then emotional intelligence. There's normal intelligence, but there's also emotional intelligence that must be learned by everyone. So, wow. Yeah. Emotional intelligence must be learned by everyone, not only artists. We are going for our first week. Um, when you come back, you are moving into Nate One, mm. how it all started. Yeah. You had a song with, I, I've forgotten the guy's name, One Fair Guy. And uh, the White Guy. The White Guy. Uh, <laughs> the Mentor. The Mentor. And I love that song. Yes, we are going to talk about how you got all these people on board, mm. how Nate One did for you. Mm. I saw Nate, Nate Two recently, years back. Mm. And now you have released a new song, Heartbreak 101. Yeah. Let's talk about all these things. So let's go for a quick beat. When you come back, we continue. show here on coffee jesse tv we are still talking to nate a Ishan. we talk about the nate a Ishan. we talk about the name but this show is probably brought to you by western flavor they are into pastries as i keep telling you make sure you order all your pastries for meat pies to cake to rockies to rock bands to anything if you are doing any product make sure you do it also don't forget that you contact cassie branding and advertising. They are right on Instagram. They made this possible for us. So if you want a beautiful mag for yourself, this is the Tech Show mag. Make sure you get some for yourself and your family. They are right on Instagram with the name Cassie Branding and Advertising. Just tell them that you heard it from Coffee Jesse TV. You get a discount as well. I'm still talking to the man of my moment. He is down to it. He's very humble. The first time, that's why you said, the first time we met was in 2017. So if you had to calculate almost five years now, we don't keep constantly talking. But anytime I reach out to him, he is ready to listen. And he makes me feel like we've even known ourselves for years. Let's talk about how I met you. I met you with Nate One. 
Yeah. Paragon Bar and Grill. Yeah. Let's look at that day. How that product? First of all, let's look at how the production came all about. How many songs was that was on that album? Um, I think twelve songs for solid to native one and two. So, one okay, was actually a listening session for both, both of them. Need one and two. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So yeah, um, we had to we got to play some of the songs from native one and some from native two, okay. and the CDs two are available. Yeah. anyone who wanted some, yeah, they give it out. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Around that same time, I was going to release the Native 2. Okay. That was uh, December 7th, okay. 2017. That was the date I would release it. And uh, my manager then, or I would still say my manager, road manager, Chrissy, KBB. Yeah, Chrissy, K okay, Chrissy Dapp, yeah. Yeah. So he came up with the whole, then let's put together some small events call um, the industry players, let them come around and some of your colleagues, then we see um, how to market and if anyone too has any idea to how to support, to, they'll, okay. they'll come up with their, yeah. So, and then we decided to look for location. We tried other places, the managers didn't give us a chance. Then we got to Paragon okay. and the manager then, he was also into music and okay. he was like, yeah, to be nice, let's, Let's do this up there, wow. and then the whole thing started. Wow. Yeah. Would you say all those managers who didn't give you that opportunity never understood music or they didn't know you as a household name? That's why you were mostly not getting that platform. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the problem. The problem with um, this place or this region, Religion. I think, is we don't give art the chance to properly shine because okay. uh, the foundation of art in almost everywhere sure. is, are open mic events. Yeah. Where do we have open mic events in Takra? None. None. That's the easiest way to scout for talent. Okay. You go to wherever, maybe the mall and there's some open mic events every Friday or something. Someone comes, a backup poetry, someone comes to rap, someone comes to sing, then as it be a tour, the D or you're just passing by, you get to see someone. Then talent scouting starts from there, but we don't really, we don't really have that. So uh, it's very hard for a business to be like, okay, I'm giving my place to an artist to come in. They haven't really seen much of that, uh, much of these two industries merging, like the music merging with maybe corporate institutions or the food market, or you get it. So. And that place is a recreational area. Mostly they are serving their food and all that. So an artist trying to do something yeah. like that. I tried other places. I can't mention their names yeah, because they yeah. bounced me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Paragon, uh, uh, Nana was much more inclined to such things. So I don't really, I think it's something that's not really done. Yeah. Wow. That's how come they did. Now looking at it, um, now you you explained to me that Nate's one, Native One and Two mm. was the listening for all of us that we mm. came. Yeah. At that era, mm. I felt Paragon was also doing a lot for you guys. Paragon FM, yeah. Because I could hear you, yeah. I could hear Legend, I could yeah. hear Township, I could hear all these guys going on Paragon yeah. to talk. Yeah. Do you think the I don't want to say the collapse, but Paragon going off? also affected some of you guys because that place was like your home. Yeah, I think Paragon, YFM, uh, yeah, they were more into this urban yeah. stuff. So. Do you think Paragon especially going down also affected some of you because they were giving you a lot of platforms. Me being here, I was listening to you guys almost every weekend. Yeah. You being on Casta Township, it was like that was your home. Yeah. Now it's no more. Do you think yeah. it's affected most of you? Yeah, it, it would definitely affect because you have uh, people like Ralph Mertz running such a business, they will try to do more, much more business integration with people in the Western region. So they brought us the uh, West local artists on board. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when they moved out of the business, if possibly, if maybe Ralph moved to a different station, uh -huh, How would you guys? It, it would have continued because I think he, he, he was championing that that thing compared to 
But even he put that aside, other stations too were doing their the best. But it seems like Paragon happened to be our home. Our home. Yeah. Sure. So, um, yeah. Coming to it, let's talk about after Nate 1 and 2, Nate mm -hmm. 1 and 2. Why did you go off for a long time? Because you might be producing, but we're not hearing you. We, the outsiders, we don't care about you producing. Mm. We care about listening to your music. Mm. Oh, Nate has released a song, we talk about it. Oh, then this guy is doing music. At a point, we might retire you if you don't hear from you. <laughs> and I feel like the attack had even retired you now. <laughs> Nate is no more doing music. Why did you go off for this period? Um, I, I, I actually followed up Native 2 with Native 3, three. Okay. Uh, the next year. Okay. And then I followed up with uh, Back to the Future EP. Okay. The next year, but it was after Back to the Future that I want to stop for okay. um, I had to get do to your personal <laughs> personal things. Wow. I had to go and build a family. Okay, okay. <laughs> so Jesus. for like two years I didn't release, then I started releasing this releasing. year. Yeah. But from native three, um coming to Back to the Future, I was traveling a lot, so I was going around so I couldn't concentrate so much on music. Yeah, I had to concentrate on my job. Job. So, on the yeah. side of it. Wow. So looking at it, what was the pressure that was being mounted on you? That point that that after um, the back to the EP or something. Back like, to the future. Back to the future EP mm -hmm. that you went silent trying to build your family. Mm -hmm. As a musician, mm -hmm. your fans will come at you. Mm -hmm. Some of the producers that know you.